The thing where my eye don't see for this Canada. My mouth no fit talk am. Bruh. Yeah, that's Pigeon English, just in case you don't know. That's Nigerian broken English right there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the Life with Mogs. I'm so, so, super excited to have you here again. Today, I will be talking about my move to Canada. Yes, my move to Canada. Hey, God. Um, anyway, so uh, basically, I'm just going to be sharing like how I moved to Canada and my, how my experience has been so far. So please stay tuned if you want to hear all the juicy details, okay? So in my previous video, I talked to you about how I moved here in 2015, right? And um, that's basically what I'm going to be doing today. So diving into that you know, what my experience in Canada has been so far. So yeah, um, right after my youth service, so basically after your undergrad in Nigeria, you're supposed to do something called the National Youth Service Corps. Um, so I did that um, for one year. And when it was time for me to come for my master's degree, um, we didn't really have money to be honest, but my parents like just pulled all their resources together just to make sure that I'll be able to come here and do my master's, right? Um, so the thing is, before I came, I remember my dad asking me, how much do you have? How much have you saved? And my mom would tell me all the time, save your money, you save. Life is not as easy as that. Because really, I was living a baby girl life, even if we didn't have all the money. But I mean, I was in my parents' house. My dad got me a car. He would fill my car. Um, so I really wasn't spending money on anything. I didn't have, you know, that habit of actually, you know, spending or paying bills. So I was just eating everything, buying food, buying this, buying that, you know. And it, it, uh, anyways, we'll talk about that one later. It was just so funny because when my dad asked me how much do you have, I was like, uh, nothing, basically. Um, and he was like, oh, wow, you know, this is what I've been telling you since you were not safe. But anyways, thank God for, um, you know, provision and my parents, you know, were able to afford, um, even if, you know, they really sacrificed, but I was able to come here. And once I came here, then I started going to school. And I remember, I think it was like a month after or so, we had this job fair in school. And then I told my mom about it. And she was like, ah, don't get it all because you know, you just started, you want to focus on your studies. But I'm like, ah. All my friends are doing it to let me to get money now let me support myself because mind you i knew that things weren't great at home and i wasn't expecting them to be sending me pocket money so basically they paid my fees but my upkeep you know like my rent um you know my transportation my feeding all of that was left to me you know and once i got a job you know that was an easy way to just relieve them of that pressure so I got a job as a tech support, a customer service role in a tech um, company. Basically, they deal with TVs, um, internet, phones. Um, and it was just such a horrible experience, to be honest. But I, I, st I stuck through it, right? Because I'm like, you know what? Um, all, like, I know that at that time, a lot of people needed that job, but they couldn't get it. A lot of people had to do like even more menial jobs, like, you know, packaging, packing tomatoes and stand in the cold. And I'm just like, God, I thank you for what I have. So even if I were to work and they would yell at me on the phone, oh, they'll be like, oh, um, can I talk to your manager? You're so incompetent, blah, 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 blah. And I was dealing with Americans who happened to be, you know, quite aggressive you know so i was just like ah i'm a niger me i mean niger babe which one is this one everybody's shouting on the phone with this accent right and i remember one time also that i was talking to someone and she was like i don't understand your accent i'm like i'm speaking english she's like no you're not can you can you pass me on to somebody who knows how to speak english i'm like okay you know so it was just a very frustrating time for me i was so sad and every time i had to think about going to work i'll be like oh my god but i knew that i needed it right so once i was done um you know with school i just decided to quit right so what happened was i fell sick and then normally if you're supposed to if you're not going to show up at work you have to call in sick right um but me i just my auntie came i followed her to ottawa and that was it so ottawa is like probably eight to ten hours away from winter and i just never went back there again i gave my id to my friend to drop drop um drop for me and my resignation but i just never went back so till tomorrow i think about it further if i ever need to maybe apply to a job or a senior role in that company they will not hire me because i behave very badly but i was frustrated right and I, I didn't really know better so i started looking for something right i looked i searched and then i had a master's um i had my master's degree in um human resource management and i really wanted to get a job in that field so i was so desperate i looked i searched i went for interviews they would say oh you sound very confident you're somebody that we think will be a good fit but i'm a no call or nobody was calling me nobody was calling my number to say okay oh, you have a job so i'm like what is going on here who explain my feelings what is 
there's something I'm doing wrong? But anyways, um, so I kept applying for jobs and I um, finally got one as a defined benefit specialist. So that basically is like a section or yeah, like a subset of human resources because under human resources, you can be like, you know, you can do pension compensation, you can do health and safety, you can do recruitment, you can do just um, HR um, administrator, like a general position. So there are lots of different um, um, sections or like um, parts that you can specialize in, right? So I got one in um, as a defined benefit specialist. Now, I was in my auntie's um, place at Ottawa, right? And um, so I'm, I just came to winter to pack my stuff because I'm like, okay, you know, time to move. And I got it in Toronto. If anybody knows about Toronto, Toronto is freaking expensive. Do you understand? Like, you gotta have money to live comfortably. That, 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 that city, eh? I think every time I think about my experience in Toronto, I have PTSD and I tell my friends that I don't want to move back there because, like, the sofa where I suffer, no be smart thing. Do you understand? But anyways, moving on. So, um, this job was going to pay me $15 an hour. And basically, I was going to be paid, I think, $500 every week. So, everything altogether, $2,000. Now, my rent, when after looking and searching, I found a place in Brampton, which was inside, inside Brampton. It was like a, um, a two-bedroom basement. And I had like my little sitting area in the room and my washroom in the room. And I was just sharing um, kitchen. That was $750. So $750 was going into um, rent already. Just think about it. And then I'll pay, you know, I'll, I'll give 10% um, of my income to God. I would also, you know, give my offering. I'll need to buy groceries. Transportation as well was expensive. And then, um, so my work was um, in uh, um, square one. So basically I had to take two buses, right? So it was just a struggle, paycheck to paycheck. My, my um, uh, what's it called? Like my, my salary was barely enough. I was li literally living from hand to mouth. And I just remember that I would just be like, God, Help me, yo. Oh, it is the lie that you say I will leave. You said I should, uh, that I will prosper, that I will be suing inside money. Well, no, but no, no, no scripture explicitly says that, but I'm just implying that, you know, God wants us to prosper. God wants us to, you know, you know, just like enjoy life, chop life. But me, I was just like, there. Yeah. I was, anyways, so, um, yeah. That went on for a while and I, I at that time i was having like you know some various health issues serious ones so i even like missed um work a few times and then it was a contract position for three months every time i think about it, i'm like why did i move from windsor which windsor is very cheap as compared to toronto it's like where, where i was staying i was paying 400 dollars for my room like all inclusive basically at the most but then imagine the difference in the rent right and so after like um the the company eventually let me go they said oh i wasn't performing up to the expectation and everything so then that's when everything now started i now have to start saying oh god where will i start from because the first thing was i was living in a house 750 dollars how am i supposed to pay that and then i also had another issue which i'll talk about on another like episode ah man i don't even know where i'm going with this thing anyways God sent help to me, you know, God is so faithful. That's another thing I'm going to say that, you know, God just knows how he provides. And through that time, I was surrounded by people who just loved upon me, who cared. You know, I had friends who just were, like were helping me out financially. I had to stay with my friend for a while because I had to move out. There was no way I could afford that rent. So I said the job search. Now, you know, I did everything. You know, I would um, tweak my resume. I would... You know watch interview like how to like answer questions i would ask questions as well like to people who were like working okay what do you think i can do differently so i was applying i remember like i'll probably do like 10 applications in a day but i wasn't getting any response it was so frustrating and i'll have to go for interviews right i had one friend who would take me to interviews from time to time but there were, you know times where she wasn't available i had to take the bus and i remember this one day where i had an interview so what happened was um when i googled the the um what's it called like the address the address sh showed me like someplace and then in the interview like on the request they didn't send the address they just put the name of the company right so i googled it and then the next day i 
you know, took the bus. And because I wanted to look professional, I wore like flat shoes. It was like minus 20, it felt like minus 29 degrees, guys. And I just wore socks because I didn't know what to expect, right? I didn't want a situation where I go into the office and then they're like, okay, you know, coming and then I'm looking all shabby. So I just like wore my, my flat shoes instead of wearing my boot because the boot I had wasn't like so nice and I wanted a professional look. So it was freezing. My legs were literally freezing. Once I got to the address, they said, oh no, that this, this isn't the address because they moved. And maybe like they didn't update, update it on Google or something. I'm like, they moved? This place was like two hours and 15 minutes away from where I was staying. I'm like, what life? I just called a cab. With, I think, maybe my last money. And I'm just like, I'm going home. I just sent them an email that I'm sorry I didn't show up. You know, I went and then the address that pulled up showed me a different place. And then the guy now had to resend me another address, which I went to the next day. But I remember that he, as I was going, I was just like, which kind of life it is oh which kind of life it is so i cried guys this is this is funny now but it wasn't i shed tears because i was like this was this was me i think i've been looking for a job like four months in now i'm like god this is so far like this is so bad i couldn't even and i remember when i got home you know i was like okay what do i want to eat like what's there to eat and everything and i i, I didn't really feel like eating what was available and me i love food a lot right so i wanted to pamper myself and i couldn't so i just had to just like whip up what i what it was in the house Like I said, I was staying with a friend, so I was basically just like, you know, anything the friend made or anything like any grocery that my friend did was basically what I, you know, partook of because I didn't have money, right? And then I just whipped up something and I'm just like, God, please change my story. This is too much suffering, right? Um, so fast forward, I kept on looking for a job, I didn't find anything, right? And then Finally, my friend tells me about this job at like a brokerage and I applied and I came to Windsor, the place I moved away from for an interview and then they said they would get back to me and eventually they told me, oh sorry, that they found someone that was bilingual so they went with the person and I'm like, uh-uh, what is the meaning of this? So me, I took right share from Toronto to Windsor and I still didn't get the job and the job wasn't even anything special. I'm like, Really, I still having self-esteem issues. Like, God, am I not smart enough? Like, you know, I, I think I'm pretty smart, right? Like, I have a master's degree. I did well in school, like my undergrad and my master's. So what is the problem? What's happening here, right? So, and then I sent the HR lady, like, a message at that, you know, company that if she has anything else, she should let me know, right? So I... I think it was like two months after then i got another job in um like a job interview in toronto it was for like um a recruiter position for 15 dollars right and then once i did it they told me oh like they gave me an offer and said oh i could start like i think the next week and then i also got um an interview request for that same that company i told you about the insurance company in windsor they uh, sent me a request so i went back again but this was a different role for a service um insurance broker role right i did the interview and i passed and then the next day they told me oh i got in the role and it was for a similar um um what's the word now similar pay so i said use your sense my girl like you know in windsor it's cheaper so i just said okay i i said okay these people that have given me the recruiter role which is what i wanted in hr to be all honest it makes sense but financially it didn't add up so i didn't want to deceive myself i'm like okay aleleo. i carried myself shaped myself back to windsor and yeah it's been it's been good from there you know i started picking up the beats of my life here and there and now we're here now we're blossoming i'm not super rich but i'm comfortable i can afford to eat good food i can afford to buy good clothes i can afford to take care of my skin thanks to chica who gave me the ordinary plug but anyways i'm gonna stop here and if you stayed till the end i want to appreciate your love i want to appreciate your support the support has been really really amazing so please right now like share subscribe um turn on the not notification <laughs> notification bell thank you for watching and have a good day bye